Well, for a closer look at the efforts to protect coral reefs, I'm joined by Nicole Crane from San Jose. Nicole is a coral reef biologist and a professor at Cabrillo College in California. Nicole is also a senior conservation scientist at the Oceanic Society. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Now, an interesting issue, and we see that coral scientists themselves seem to be divided on this sunscreen issue. Why is that? Well, at first I want to point out that I, I wouldn't use the word divided um, among the community of coral reef biologists. I would say more that it's a discussion. And I, I guess the real reason for that is because there are so many stressors to coral reefs today. Um, and, and sunscreen chemicals are one of many stressors. And so the discussion that coral reef biologists are having is where should we put most of our energy? Which of those stressors are the most important to address? So it's not, it's not a, divi a division, I would say. It's more of a discussion about how we should support different ideas and in which direction we should put most of our energy. So then, because we don't really have a clear answer on exactly how, how much certain stresses are affecting the coral reefs, help people understand the ecological importance that coral reefs really have on the ecosystem. Yeah, so coral reefs, uh, although they uh, comprise a very small percentage of the ocean, 1%, and less than 1% of our planet, contain over 25% of the species. So they're extremely important ecological systems. They also support people. Many people rely on coral reefs for food. And as was mentioned earlier in the show, coral reefs are important in buttressing coastlines, protecting coastlines from storms and sea level rise. The other thing about coral reefs, though, is that they're extremely sensitive and really interesting ecosystems. They rely on a very tight um, relationship between the coral animal and small dinoflagellates or little algae, little photosynthesizers, like little solar panels that live inside of them. And they're quite sensitive to lots of conditions. And so the, the issue with the chemicals is really about how it might disrupt coral growth and also that really special relationships that corals have with those algae that are using sun to produce energy that fuels that entire system. So for regions that have these bands in place, what do we know about the sort of impact that's having on coral reefs in the ecosystem? Um, well, the, the chemicals themselves, um, there's many of them in, in sunscreens. And I think one of the things that's important to understand is that there are really two different types of sunscreens. Um, many sunscreen users might not know that there are sun UV, UVA, UVB blocks like zinc oxide. And then there are the kinds of sunscreens that actually absorb ultraviolet radiation and release it at a longer wavelength so it's not quite as damaging. It's those chemical-based sunscreens, the ones that absorb the sun, that seem to be causing problems to the corals. Um, for example, oxybenzone and octanoxate are chemical groups that disrupt that relationship between those algae and the corals and can cause the corals to bleach, which is um, really essentially they're turning white as they release those zooxanthellae. Um, can also disrupt um, the ability for small baby corals to um, uh, big, uh, accrue their calcium carbonate. Right. They can become deformed and so um, can cause real harm to the reef and the reef growth. Now, Nicole, as we heard in the report, some people essentially feel like they're making a choice between protecting themselves with sunscreen versus protecting the reefs. What sort of sunscreen alternatives are out there? There's a lot of sunscreen alternatives. And, and I, I sympathize with the people who said, you know, I don't want to be told what to do with sunscreen, and I need to protect my children. I need to protect myself. Um, I also work in the sun a lot, so I very much sympathize with that. Um, there are other ways to protect yourself. For one, wearing rash guards and wearing actual covers to the skin is probably one of the best ways. But there are also a number of sunscreen companies. Um, Goddess Garden is one of our uh, more local West Coast companies that use a series of ingredients. Some are organic, some are not. Um, but they rely more on those um, sun blockers rather than the chemical agents. So there's a lot of choice out there actually now. And, and the companies are responding to these issues and producing sunscreens now that do not have those chemicals. So with a little bit of research, anybody can find them uh, on any website and in many, many stores now. And just quickly, we have about 30 seconds left. Obviously, a lot of this is going to involve self-policing because it's going to be very hard to try and really implement that and kind of follow people to see what kind of sunscreen they're using. What would you like people and businesses to understand about this issue and the role that they can play in supporting the health of coral reefs? You know, many people don't understand the level of of issues that affect coral reefs. However, everybody understands um, being a consumer and the kinds of 
um, movements, issues that their money supports or not. And what I'd like people to know about this is that by buying Reef Safe sunscreen, they are promoting care for reefs. They are also expanding knowledge about reefs and, and maybe um, encouraging people to understand more about reefs. And companies can respond to that by being environmentally aware themselves, addressing some of these problems. The sunscreen is really a low-hanging fruit. And if we can pick that fruit, we really can make a difference in quite the short term to help protect coral reefs, which are a rapidly uh, disappearing ecosystem. All right, thank you so much. Nicole Crane there, coral reef biologist, professor at Cabrillo College and senior conservation scientist at the Oceanic Society.